What is up you guys? Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about some super, super simple, easy tips for the postpartum period. So I'm gonna be speaking more on um, nutrition and mindset and movement and how those things together will make you have an awesome postpartum period as best as you can. So for me personally, um, I'm coming up on 10 weeks postpartum, which is super crazy. On Sunday, it'll be my baby will be 10 weeks old. Can't even believe it. He's my first baby. Um, and I know it's new into my mothering journey and some of you OG moms that have like three kids, you're probably like, oh my God, what does she know? Um, but I do know something. In 10 weeks, I've learned quite a bit and I wanted to share my perspective as a first time mom to you guys. If you're pregnant right now, and you're just looking for like, what's the postpartum period like, or how to get through um, the first you know, six weeks after birth, um, I'm gonna give you my perspective, which uh, is, is maybe a little different than the videos you've seen so far. So here it is. Um, I'm gonna start with just briefly what my post -period, postpartum period has looked like in terms of like work. Um, so I went back to work at six weeks, literally to the day. Um, that may sound crazy to some people in the United States. That's quite common. I'm Canadian, so it's pretty bizarre um, to a lot of my friends and family who are like, dude, you could have had a, a year maternity leave. But I didn't know I was gonna have a baby. Um, and when I lived in Canada, I wasn't ready to have a baby. And I wasn't about just to move back to Canada for that. I have too much going on here in the US. So for me personally, went back to work at six weeks. So that meant I was pumping. Um, I started pumping actually in like right away, like the th second or third week, just to get used to it, um, to make sure I understood how to use my pump and I was comfortable with pumping and just seeing like how much milk can I actually get out and how does this whole thing work. So if you do have to go back to work at six weeks, I'd recommend start pumping um, and testing the waters at about two to three weeks. Um, so I was home with the baby and my husband for two weeks straight and we didn't have any visitors. And it is COVID at the time of this recording. Um, so if you're watching this and COVID is, is, a, is a long like past thing, then that's amazing and I'm excited for that day. But um, for us, it, it was easy to say no to family and friends for that two week period because of COVID. But if, if it was a non-COVID time, I would still recommend that you create your own little bubble for at least two weeks postpartum. Um, a lot of people would think that that's kind of cruel and unusual to not allow your mother, your father, or your brother, or sister to come in and see the baby in that time. But I think from like, for me, for like a mental health, um, from a mental health standpoint, it was very important for my husband and I and the baby to bond as a unit. And, and just like have our own sort of rhythm. And it was literally the greatest decision we ever made. It was a very hard decision for me to make. My mom was insistent. She wanted to be here. She wanted to come before the baby was even born. And I was like, no mom, it's not gonna work. Um, we ate pancakes every morning for breakfast and sausage and eggs. And we lounged around in our pajamas and drank coffee and went for walks. And it was just really, really nice. My husband was amazing. He did everything for me. In my first 10 days, I had a lot of mobility kind of issues. Uh, I had a vaginal birth and a second degree tear and that the second degree tear was not the issue. My issue was a really, really bad uh, lower back or like sacrum pain. And that was due to the position of the baby when he was born. He was, um, his head was tilted to the side and he was born sunny side up. So he actually has a large bruise on the back of his head or he had, which has now turned to just a red spot. Um, and that was kind of bruised my tailbone. So I was very immobile for the first 10 days and my husband was amazing. Um, so shout out to him um, for taking care of me and, and doing everything for me. And I'm a pretty independent person, so it was really hard for me to <laughs> like just have him do things. But after a while, dude, I got used to it. I was like, I like this, like this could go on for longer. Making my coffee every morning was fantastic. Waking up to my hot cup of joe was excellent um so yeah first two weeks we just did nuclear family it was awesome second two weeks my mom came to visit she didn't stay with us there's my second tip do not have your in-laws or your mother stay in your home with you although it may be tempting if you have a giant house that has like a separate wing in its own apartment then sure but we live in an apartment 
and I think a lot of young couples these days live in apartments and we're not not as many people are getting into home ownership as at young of an age so you might have a baby or two and live in an apartment or more don't have them stay with you have them get an Airbnb stay in a hotel do what you gotta do it isn't rude you have to put yourself first and your sanity to, to be able to have my mom come here at like 11 a.m. and then stay till like 3 and then go home to where she was staying and allow me to have my own time, that was invaluable. Even the amount of time she was here, some days felt like sensory overload. It was too much. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a big tip. Don't feel bad. I felt bad and it took me like everything I had to be like, no, you cannot come here in the next two weeks, in the first two weeks, I'm gonna be alone, it's not personal, it's for me and my sanity, this is my baby, this is my choice, and then you're not gonna stay with me. And it may seem crazy, but it really, really helped. And then she went home, and the final two weeks, I was by myself. And that was also a fantastic decision that I do not regret, because it gave me and the baby time to create our own little rhythm. Even though I was going back to work, in two weeks, it still gave us that kind of bonding time with just the baby and I. So that's how I did it. And then six weeks went back to work. I only work out of the home 20 hours a week and then I'm in the home for 20 hours a week. So it's not like what you think where it's like, oh my God, you left your baby after six weeks and you're back to work 40 hours a week outside of the house. For those of you that do that, props to you because that would be very, very difficult in terms of the amount of, even just the amount of milk you'd have to pump. Um, so that's my tips for just like those logistics. Um, in terms of mindset, uh, my biggest tip for how to remain super optimistic and positive and happy in your postpartum period, because it is possible. A lot of people will say, be prepared to never sleep again. Um, I know in my last like four weeks of pregnancy, I went two weeks overdue, right to 42 weeks. I literally had him on the 42nd week on the Sunday. Um, but a lot of people said, oh, you think you're tired now? Wait till you have the baby, you're never gonna sleep again. Wrong. I've been sleeping just fine. Do I wake up in the night? Yes. But am I able to function normally throughout the day and not feel like I'm a walking zombie? Yes. And what is the secret? I'll tell ya, side lay, breastfeeding, side lying, however you wanna say it. Lie on your side, pull your tit out, let them have it. That's how you do it. None of this, put the baby in a separate room in a crib. You can try that, but those are the people that are walking zombies, I'm pretty sure. Because my baby initially slept in one of those docketot thingies in the middle of our bed between my husband and I. That's where he slept. So he was protected in his own little docketot. Controversial, yes. There's a whole bunch of controversy when it comes to sleeping and, and babies, and I'm not gonna get into that. But what we did is a docketot in the middle of our king size bed. He had no blankets or pillows around him. He was in his own docketot, okay? And then he would wake up, I would take him out of the docketot. And what I first did in the first two weeks is I would go and sit on a chair with my breast pillow which is a pillow that clips around your waist. If you're pregnant, you probably already have one. If not, you need to get one. It's called my breast friend. And I would sit the baby on that thing. I'd have the burp cloth over my shoulder. I'd nurse him and I'd literally be like this. So tired, right? And then I'd burp him and then he'd start crying, 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 because he'd have gas. And then I'd feed him more. And then he'd burp, 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 burp. And then I'd be walking around the room like this pacing back and forth, so tired. I did that for two weeks and I was like, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> That's not working for me. It's not working for him either because he's upset. Side lying, breast feeding. I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube. I tried it. He was still very tiny, so it was a little bit challenging, but you really Google it and you, you prop yourself up with pillows. You get one on your back, you put one in between your legs and then you roll a, a little blanket or a towel up and prop that up behind him so he can stay on his side. And then you give him the boob. If you have extra big boobs, then you can also feed him with the other, other breasts sort of turning more 
and he can he can have both laying with you laying on the same side if you have a smaller chest you just grab the baby roll over and then feed him from the other one on that side this is how you get sleep as a new mom and then guess what happens he falls asleep at the nipple and then you put him back in his dock a tot that's what we did okay this is just anecdotal okay it may not be following any safe sleep rules but if you really deep dive deep and research that stuff there's a few things that you need to be aware of when you have a baby sleeping in your bed. You can't be on drugs, you can't have drank alcohol, you can't be a smoker, you can't be obese, and those are the main criteria. So accidents do happen. You can't have pillows and blankets and things around the baby. Um, but I'm not gonna get into that. But this is just what I did, and that's what's worked for me. So then he grew out of the dock a tot, and now he sleeps in a bassinet next to my side of the bed. And we do the same routine. He, except instead of going to sleep in the dock tot in our bed, he goes to sleep in the bassinet. When he wakes up, I pull him into the bed, side lay breastfeed him, he'll fall asleep, I put him back in his bassinet. If he wakes up twice in the night, which he often does, I take him back out, side lay breastfeed him, and then he falls asleep and I fall back asleep. He stays in the bed with me. I'm comfortable with this for reasons that I said before. Um, so, that is how I get sleep. The other things I do are, I drink two of these a day, filled with water. It's called a bubba, it's insulated. There's still ice in there and I filled that up early in the morning. Drink two of those a day. Hydration is key for, for your mood, for staying full, because if you feel the need to constantly be snacking and eating, you might be dehydrated. The signals can often get conflicted. Your brain you might think you're hungry, but you're not. You're just bored and you're dehydrated. Drink more water. If you're still hungry, then eat. Why not throw some electrolytes in that water? Electrolytes, a lot of people are deficient in sodium and potassium and magnesium. So just grab an electrolyte supplement. They come in pill form. They come in powders. They come in those fizzy things like an Alka-Seltzer. Get some electrolytes in your body. You'll feel great. Helps with headaches. Helps with your heart. There's all these things. Magnesium is great for sleep. Grab yourself an electrolyte. Next up, um, don't be afraid to supplement. Grab some coffee in the morning. There's no harm in having caffeine and breastfeeding. Oh, hydration is also key for breastfeeding. Breast milk is composed mostly of water, so you have to be hydrated. Have to, have to, have to, have to. If your supply is dwindling, are you hydrated enough? Um, yeah, don't be afraid to supplement. Have caffeine in the morning. Um, do a green supplement if you can't get enough servings of greens in in a day. Use a protein powder. Um, Quest Protein makes an excellent whey protein. Vanilla, chocolate, they're amazing. Um, the vanilla one especially, it's um, keto. So there, there's no cane sugar or anything in there. It's totally keto approved. I highly recommend the vanilla milkshake flavor. It's the best. Um, you can add cacao powder to make it chocolate or you can do berry. So best of both worlds. Exogenous ketones, another excellent supplement. Allows you to be low carb and high fat, but not do the strict hardcore ketogenic diet that's so hard to maintain. Use supplements, it's 2020 you guys. We have iPhones, we have the internet, we drive cars, like we take planes over giant oceans to get places. It's a hack, right? Why not use a supplement? If they're there, use it if it makes your life easier. And as a new mom, why not make your life easier? And it's gonna make your brain light up like your Christmas tree, right? You're hydrated, you've got supplements on board, you got some caffeine in your system, you're eating clean. And that brings me to my next point. Ditch the sugar, ditch the booze, try it. Just see how you feel, okay? Eat clean, get rid of the junk food. If you want a tasty treat, use an alternative sugar like allulose, stevia, erythritol, friggin', those are the best, monk fruit. You can still have treats, just make better choices. It will pay off. It will give you back your time. Um, next point, movement. Get in 30 minutes of movement every single day. Doesn't matter what you do. Body weight exercise, do some stretching, do some yoga, get 30 minutes in. Go outside and get some fresh air. Key for mental health, get outside. Turn off your TV, go outside. Bundle up your baby, bundle yourself up if you're in the winter, get outside. Next point, make a plan, have a plan for your day. I have a planner for my baby, 
This is when he wakes up and feeds. I have an agenda planner for myself and I have a journal. This is where I talk about my feelings. This is where I plan out my to-dos and the things that I have to do like doctor's appointments, etc. And this is for my baby. So it's totally key to be organized and you make sure you get all of those things in and guess what, it's gonna give you more time. My baby's waking up. I'm gonna go grab him. Hold on, you guys. waking up from his nap. This is Danger Zen Matias. He's almost 10 weeks old. He just went, woke up from his nap, didn't you? So mommy got so much done. Yes, mommy got so much done. <gasps> Working from home. Yeah, and on her break, she does things like this. And there's my puppy. So, we've been over a lot of stuff. We've been over supplements, water intake, moving your body every day, doing some sort of workout. We've been over making a plan, using an agenda planner to keep those like, you know, tasks that you have to get done organized, a journal to reflect and to sort out your feelings. Honestly, just do it. If you've never journaled in your life, it's life changing. I've been journaling since I was like literally eight years old. Um, and now it's just like part of my life. It's a compulsion. I know a lot of people struggle to journal, but even just jotting down some jot notes, how you feel today. Um, and then having the baby tracker or activity planner is very important at the beginning, logging diapers and feedings. And after a while, honestly, I just use it for when he's awake and when he's sleeping. Cause then it gives me a barometer of like, oh, he's been asleep for two hours. I probably have two more hours till he wakes up or whatever. Um, and then the side lay breastfeeding for optimal sleep at night. Uh, and then cutting out sugar and processed foods. So those are my tips for how to have an amazing postpartum period. And then of course, setting boundaries with family um, and having time to yourself with your partner if you can. So, and I've done this and, and I've gone back to work at six weeks. So if you have more time than that, then you're extra lucky to be able to put all these things in place. Um, but yeah, that's what's really worked for me. And um, I'm literally less than 10 pounds away from my pre-pregnancy size which the, my goals for, for moving and eating well were not entirely for weight loss. Obviously, I didn't want to remain 190 pounds because for me, that's too big on my frame. Um, and luckily, when you give birth, you lose a lot of that right away. But a clean diet, the movement, just a little bit of movement every day, and all the tips I've sort of gone over, they really help to accelerate that loss in a healthy way. So if you guys like this video, please subscribe. You'll be seeing more of this little peanut butter bear. Um, I drop new videos on Tuesdays and Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Um, leave me a comment below if you want to hear more about any of these topics in more detail. Let me know and I will definitely make a video about it. Thank you so much and have an awesome rest of your day.